Let's look at some fairly standard criteria for um, STEMI bypass now. STEMI is ST elevation myocardial infarct. And this is, uh, when I say STEMI bypass, what I'm referring to is criteria in the pre-hospital setting for recognizing, diagnosing acute myocardial infarct, and rather than taking the patient to the closest hospital, taking them to a, a percutaneous coronary intervention center where they can get balloon angioplasty. Now, the, one of the fundamental principles with acute MIs is the patients with the largest infarcts will benefit the most from thrombolytic therapy and from uh, a PCI center. And uh, not that that's uh, really a, a real criteria for us, but just a, a principle to keep in mind. So um, here are some of the standard, fairly common criteria for transport to a PCI center. Uh, they have signs and symptoms consistent with a myocardial ischemia or myocardial infarct. And this is important because if you get patients with ST changes that are consistent with MI, but they don't have uh, symptoms or they're completely asymptomatic, we may be dealing with uh, early repolarization symptoms. We'll talk about that later, so that's important to keep in mind. A 12-lead interpretation of STEMI. And um, the, the transport monitors are quite good at accurately interpreting acute myocardial infarct. Uh, I would argue that they're not so great at uh, interpreting some other things, <laughs> but that's for later discussion. Uh, but they're pretty good at recognizing STEMI. So if your machine is saying the patient's having acute myocardial infarct, then chances are the signs on the 12 lead ECG at least are, are pretty um, likely to be acute MI. Again, you have to correlate that with the patient's clinical condition. Um, you have to be uh, less than 60 minutes, uh, has to be less than 60 minutes from patient contact to PCI center. Uh, there has to be ST elevation of at least a millimeter in two or more anatomically contiguous limb leads. And when we say limb leads, we're generally referring to leads one, two, and three. Or uh, the patient has to have at least two millimeters uh, ST elevation in two or more anatomically contiguous precordial leads, and those are the chest leads or presumably new onset left bundle branch block. Now, this is an interesting one because uh, when we transport patients to the pre-hospital setting, we don't have the luxury of having uh, previous ECGs to see if they have, if that left bundle branch block is old or not. But if they've got a new onset left bundle branch block, they have to have a fairly plock, a proximal occlusion of their LAD or their left main coronary artery. So if this is a new onset left bundle branch block due to myocardial infarct, they likely are having quite a big MI. So they should be quite sick. And um, the reason uh, why the criteria is new onset left bundle branch block is because it's very difficult to interpret uh, acute myocardial infarct in a left bundle branch block. And the reason for that is that um, when you have a blockage in the left bundle like this, what happens is the right ventricle depolarizes initially, and then the left ventricle depolarizes more slowly from muscle cell to muscle cell. So what we're seeing predominantly on the ECG is depolarization of the right ventricle, and most infarcts take, occur in the left ventricle, so it's difficult to diagnose acute MI with a left bundle branch block. There are some criteria, and I encourage paramedics to um, uh, do a search for that and read the criteria, but um, uh, in the pre-hospital setting, we just look at new onset uh, left bundle branch block and think about how they might present clinically with that. So some exclusion criteria for uh, PCI includes uh, morbid obesity, and that's uh, really the main one, and, and uh, in some centers, the only one. Now, um, in terms of ST segment scoring, uh, this is not important. This is just kind of interesting, um, but determining who's having a massive MI, who's not having a massive, uh, a massive MI or extensive MI, because people throw that term massive and extensive around without um, any kind of science behind it, but there is some criteria. So if, if there's seven millimeters or more ST elevation that leads two, three in AVS, so in other words, combined ST segment elevation, then you're dealing with an extensive inferior wall MI. If there's 12 millimeters or more in the precordial leads, uh, that would uh, signify an extensive anterior lateral or anterior lateral wall MI. So here's an example where uh, we have an inferior MI where we have about two millimeters here. In lead three, we have about four millimeters. And then in ABF, we have about another three or four millimeters. So that's uh, greater than seven um, millimeters of ST elevation. So that's an extensive inferior wall infarction. 